America. My name is Armio Safe from Pong. I come to you live every Thursday about this time. And I'm going to talk a little bit about being teamed up on with reference to Dave Chappelle's Saturday Night Live monologue. I can't get clips from the monologue. Uh, I, I think Saturday Night Live uh, has a special protection. But I do have, um, I'll, I'll give you the arguments. And more importantly, I do have clips from Kanye and uh, Bhatia Unger Sagan. Um, talking about similar issues and we're going to kind of get through the politics of what it is to be teamed up on because most people talk about this issue as the right to um, act as a team but very few people talk about what it means to be teamed up on and, and Kanye said something actually very interesting and I think appropriate and 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 penetrating in a way that we don't really talk about when he says, I think I, I, I had the experience where I was teamed up on and I did not like it. And that precipitated quite a few of his more dubious moves. So first I'm going to, first I am going to hit the opening and I, I'm, a, I'm a tad bit, I have to be very careful with this show because I'm going to talk about a certain ethnic group that has, uh, you know, strategies <laughs> concerning how to silence me talking about the power of ethnic power. So let me hit the opening and I'll be right with you. To the beach, y'all. Change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state facts. You leave it up to me, I'll paint the White House black and it can feature in your front. Okay, this is our meal, say from Pong, and I am going to talk about what it means to team up on. Be teamed up on. It's not obvious that people know that, that people, um, know what it is to be teamed up on. But if you're a black man and you've made it in this world in any sort of way, especially if you said something that's somewhat unpopular, you've been teamed up on in some point in time in your life. And I suspect other people have been teamed up on in some point in time in their life. It's not just black men. But, um, yeah. Uh, now, conservatives are honest when they team up on someone. They'll say, this is my team. That's your team. And of course, I'm going to team up on you when it means that it's good for my team. It's a little bit different when liberals do it because liberals deny that there is such a thing as a team and then go about the business of teaming up on you. And look, I've said I've been called a misogynist for saying that there's something a little bit dubious about feminism insofar as there are, there are perks, <laughs> like relative to the black situation, there are perks to being a, a woman than there are uh, to being black. So it's not like you're a minority in the same way. And nobody, like, it's, it's a different, it's a, st the structure of the oppression is different. And until you get that right, it, it turns out that I, I think until we get, like, Gender is, has been an obstacle. Gender, what seems to be gender progress has been an obstacle to racial progress because it's just calcified power in hands that aren't black. Um, and we don't talk about that as what it is. But, um, and so people who normally consider themselves liberal feminists and say that there are no teams, we should all just be human, have teamed up against me. And I've been teamed up against uh, by the University of Georgia, my own university, for suggesting that, you know, for black people to be free and to get their fair share, it may be the case that, it may be the case that um, some white people may have to die. And for that, I was teamed up on. I think that's inappropriate to team up on me for that because we had an entire civil war that pretty much proved my case. That like when slaves asked nicely to be let free, it didn't happen. It, it took a civil war and no small number of, of white people dying. And then the University of Georgia came out with a statement that said, 
You know, the University of Georgia denies the um, um, uh, is against violence in all of its forms. It's not promulgate violence in any forms. And, and that's just a lie because the University of Georgia has a football team, number one football team in the nation. And that's a violent sport. That's why I don't play. Um, and I don't want my kids to play because it's a little bit too violent for my kids, you know, head. So, and it has an ROTC program. Uh, which, you know, teaches people how to do violence onto other people. And, you know, I have martial arts classes at the gym, and that's violence. And then has a campus carry uh, policy where you can actually bring your gun on campus, which seems to be promoting violence in a different form. So it's not that the University of Georgia is against violence in all forms. It's just against violence when it's suggested that it might be the appropriate means to... Um, it might be the appropriate means to secure black people a sense of self, uh, self-determination, right? So I think that's a problem. I was teamed up on. And so when Kanye says that he thinks he was being teamed up on, I, I want to believe him, right? And so what's the problem with being teamed up on? It's not, it's, not, it's not obvious that that is that big of an issue. So let's talk to Bhatia Ungasargan about what that means. And here is a clip. He's also right that they do business together the way all groups tend to, favoring intra-group relationships. He's also right that... Right, that seems pretty banal, right? People just help out people they're around, right? That's not that big of a sp- it's not that, that it's not that particularly um it's not that it doesn't seem that particularly egregious at first. It's not that big of a deal. Now what happens when you're outside of the group? What happens when you're outside of the group? That's the question. Do you still get do you, what, like, what happens when you need a fair shot, but someone else with an in-group uh, hookup gets, gets the, the shot, right? So many executives are Jewish is not because they're Jewish, but because people, all people in power tend to help those in their immediate networks. And the reason so many executives are Jewish is not... And it's not obvious that everyone does do this. I was reading a paper where it said that, like, look... Black people will go to school with anybody. Everybody, (laughs) Latinos and the whites tend to go out of their way to make sure that they only go to school with Latinos and whites. Black people will go to school with anybody. Um, Black parents will send their kids to school with anybody else. So it's not obvious that everybody has the same sort of intra-communal kind of sensibility in terms of the special responsibility they have to each other. And if you're outside, if you're frozen out of that special responsibility, that special responsibility can be weaponized against you. And that is a non-negligible, that's a non-negligible issue. And that's when I brought up, and so I did some reading about this respect, um, special responsibility and I am not going to pronounce the Hebrew well but I can this I can tell you that uh, translates to all Jews are responsible for each other it seems a pretty kind of banal phrase all cliche all Jews are responsible for each other it's not it's something that comes up right I've, I've heard it before I had to do some research to figure out like the exact and like the translation sometimes it's laze instead of baze but um it seems like a pretty benign thing. What is it to be in a religion that explicitly tells you that you're responsible for each other? Which means in a competitive society, in a civil society, that, um, that is somewhat competitive. Which means that if you, it's, it's like a poker game and everybody else at the table is on the same team. Then it stops being poker and it stops like the feeding. It's, 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 a, it's a racket. <laughs> it starts being a racket, right? And so what does it mean? It seems like a benign thing just to be responsible for other people in your community. But then when you, def- when you narrowly define community outside 
or within civil society, but still extends outside civil society, that's a problem, right? So the problem isn't going to be that there are a lot of Jews in Hollywood. There are a lot of everywhere, everyone. There are a lot of black people in the NBA, but we don't run it. And there's no ethic that we should like asymmetrically use our ethnic power to take care of each other. Or if we should be unfair to anyone outside of the group, if that means taking care of the people um, within the group, right? So there isn't the same kind of clannishness. You can, and this is why I, like people say, like, well, you know, there are a lot of Asians at, at UC Berkeley, so that's a problem. And I'm like, no, that's not a problem. It's not like they're working together to keep everybody else out. That would be a problem. That would be a problem. Just the fact that they're there doesn't matter. And this is what Kanye was suggesting when he talked about like, you know, the fact that his lawyer and, and the guy, the, the person who wanted to medicate him and like his agent and all of the people in his life were Jewish. It wasn't really a problem until he got the sense that they were teaming up against him. And that's a problem. So in what case would they, why would they ever team up against him? Well, if you're invested in the status quo and you have to deal with a revolutionary and your community depends on a non-revolution, then it's in your community's interest to manage the revolutionary, right? And I've said a lot of black people have had the experience of being teamed up on by people who will deny that they're part of a team. And I just think we shouldn't deny that, we're, that, that you're being teamed up on because sometimes you're being teamed up on and that's when the gaslighting starts. Uh, black people in the chat, I'm sure, go ahead and, 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 you know, raise your hand in the chat if you've ever been teamed up on. And if you've been teamed on, up on by groups that deny that they're groups that team up on people. Because the problem isn't representation or over-representation or under-representation. That's not the issue. Nobody, ta like, I'm not worried about, yeah, I'm not worried about over or under-representation of any group. I'm worried about the teaming up on and the ethics of that group and the logic of that group that then ends in legitimizing black exploitation and black exploitation is legitimized by different groups of whites in different ways so you can say like well the problem is they're all white no they're all white in different ways if you're going to get justice for black people you got to go through the christian church it's got to change because it's it was organized in america to legitimize the exploitation of black people so it's got to go it, it, it has to be reformed right but that's different that's a different kind of legitimizing logic that ends in black exploitation than the legitimizing logic of Jewish Americans that also ends in black exploitation. Um, so we need all religions to work in a way that's consistent with supporting outside justice claims, justice claims for people outside of the religion. Right? So, um, you know, I, it's, we like to think it's a benign thing to just help out people within your group, intercommunal, um, the intercommunal sustenance and responsibility. We like to think it's a benign thing. But if you're outside of the group and helping people within the group means extracting resources and exploiting people outside of the group, then your intracommunal concern becomes a justice issue for those people outside of the group. Right? And... You know, it comes in a lot of ways. It comes in just, you know, the groupiness comes in just keeping your mouth shut. How many times have you just needed someone to step up and they just kept their mouth shut because of their relationship with someone else who they consider in their group and you're outside of the group? Black people, this will happen to us all the time, right? And I, and I talk about it, how, and I talk about it that... Um, ah. I'm buffering a lot, aren't I? Uh, I, I talk about it in, in, in many ways, um, but mostly it's like white women will betray you in a way to other white women who they don't even like because that's the outside of the group, right? So what does that mean? Um, 
when your justice claim is going to be submerged to sustain a relationship with someone they don't even like. Not only do they not agree with, they don't even like, but still they're more loyal to sustaining that group identity than they are to your justice claim, right? So we need to kind of unpack all of the different varieties of intra-group that's within the group a dynamics that lead to kind of exogenous degradation and subordination, right? So if you're just trying to empower your group, it seems benign, but part of what it is to empower your group is to be able to protect yourself from the justice claims of those outside of your group, right? And you're being able and you're being willing to protect your own grift or the, the quality of life of your own group then becomes a, a justice claim for the whole polity and those outside of your group. So being teamed up on isn't benign. And this is what Chappelle got right when he, I mean, when he talked about, um, I can't find the, the, I can't find the link. I can't find the link um, to where Kanye says exp uh, explicitly. I'll, I'll post it. I'll, I'll post this video onto Twitter and then put the explicit part um, right below it uh, where Kanye just says like he, he feels like he was teamed up on. And what does that mean? And, and I think that's, that's right. So when Trump says that we don't understand why, when, when Chappelle talks about we don't understand why Trump is so popular, it's because uh, he, Chappelle says that poor whites looked at Trump and they were impressed because Trump would come out and tell them, look, those politicians in Washington, they are teaming up against you. And nobody else would deny, everyone else would deny that. Obama said we're all on the same team. Hillary Clinton said we're all on the same team. There are no teams. But Trump was saying like, no, those politicians in Washington are teaming up against you. I know because I was in the meetings <laughs> where we were <laughs> dividing your ass up. Like we were teaming up against you. And, um, and, we've, and a lot of Americans appreciated honesty. Poor white Americans appreciated honesty. This is what Chappelle was saying. And I think that's right. Trump was honest that there are teams and they're teaming up against you. We aren't all in it together. They are feeding on you. And I'm not going to feed on you in that way. And, and that's what Trump brought to the table. And, and people appreciated Trump for that quality of honesty. And this, and this is what Chappelle got right. And, and this is the part of the Chappelle monologue that nobody's talking about. Another thing that Chappelle got right, which is pretty funny, is that Kanye got in so much trouble that Kyrie got in trouble. <laughs> Kyrie was, had that problem of fitting. Uh, we're looking for a man fitting your description. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a black man about your size fitting your description. Kyrie just got caught up in some Kanye stuff. And that's too bad because he just because Kyrie was just minding his own business and the timing was just all <laughs> wrong. And they were and people were out looking for a man fitting his description. Right? So this idea that anti-Semitism in all forms is bad is a little bit dubious in the same way that anti-Christianity needs to happen if we're going to be serious about justice because the way the Christian church is organized in the practices legitimize equality of black degradation and deprioritize getting reparations as a matter of justice and, 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 and kind of Christian duty and prioritize a, a form of charity which is fundamentally like just going to sustain um, the racial hierarchy in the United States. So the Christian church has to change if black people are going to be made whole. Right. So, and also, you can't be surprised when our gender identities, which have laced in racial and class entitlements, have always seemed to work against serious labor and racial justice. Look, anytime you're serious about a labor and racial justice campaign, a group of women, especially white women, standing on their gender identity is going to serve as an obstacle to your um, racial and labor justice campaign. They won't do it as, as people, they'll do it as mothers or they'll do it as feminists. But make no mistake, at the end, black people will be frustrated in their justice claims, right? So this is where, like, if you're serious about racial and labor uh, politics, you're gonna have to be 
And I'll say it, you're gonna have to be a little bit misogynist because womanhood itself is a historical identity that has emerged to, to license and legitimize a quality of extraction from outgroup populations, men and women, um, that like our entire notions of womanhood have to change if we're serious about racial and labor justice, which is fine. I think it'll be better and more just at the end, but we got to talk about the division of labor and division of responsibility. And it's going to seem like it's going to be a form of misogyny because the problem is womanhood in the same way that there are problems with, um, uh, there are problems with manhood. So like they're going to be, so when you talk about toxic masculinity or whatever, you're going to be called misandrist because you're going after, you're trying to change manhood. It's fine. Manhood should be changed. And, and it's not like, not all manhood, like, especially white manhood, it needs to be changed. Um, like, and you're going to be labeled a misandrist or a man hater. That's fine. So anybody who says like misandry in all forms shouldn't, um, shouldn't be allowed isn't serious about justice because there's going to have to be some misandry if we're going to get serious about justice. And the same with misogyny. There's going to have to be a little bit of misogyny if we're going to get serious about justice. And there's going to have to be a little bit of anti-Christian uh, sentiment. And there's going to have to be a little bit of anti-Semitic sentiment because all of these ideologies have emerged in a way that complements, um, that they kind of mutually reinforce and complete a system of, of racial hierarchy in differentiated ways. So you can't just paint with a broad brush all of them because they'll all legitimize the extraction of resources and the degradation of black justice claims in different ways. Um, so you have to deal with them in their specificity, right? So we have to say that like, it's no, no, it's not benign just to take care of other people within your group when taking care of other people in your group licenses a form of structured degradation, right? And you can say like, well, I didn't think about it when I, uh, I didn't think about it. I was thinking about people, how to help my own people. But that's not how a democracy works and can stay whole. That's, that's a low-grade, cold civil war. Um, and that black people are losing. And lastly, I'll end with, uh, you know, the situation in Los Angeles where Nuni uh, Martinez, Nuni Martinez said, like, well, you know, we can't go with him because he's with the blacks. And so I'm saying that Hey, my, my kids are, are going to come home and say hi to the people. I love you, Daddy. I love you, too. <laughs> say hi to the people. Hi, hi. Hi, 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 hi. All right, let me finish my show, and I'll be right back. Are you going to cook some burgers? I will cook some burgers for you once I'm done. Hamburgers. Hamburgers. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. I'm going to get some more. Right. So, uh, Nuri Martinez said that she, uh, you know, you have to be careful working with this other council member because they're with the blacks or this other city official because they're with the blacks. Now, if you're a black contractor and you're trying to get a city contract and you're thinking, you know what? I think these Latinos are teaming up against me. Two months before that leaked audio dropped, people would say, you're crazy. You're, you're just, you just see a conspiracy theory. But you would say to yourself, I think, you know, these people, they're teaming up against me. They're for themselves. And I am not one of themselves. And they're teaming up against me. And the people would say you're crazy. And then there is a audio in which <laughs> she's, she's with her team organizing the team against you. And it's a she. So it's not like you can say, you know, people are like, well, Latino is a patriarchal. Well, somehow this Latino woman was, got pretty high up and like knew her team. Um, and it wasn't us, right? So what does that mean? It means that we're being teamed up on all the time. And it rolled off her tongue pretty casually. Like that wasn't the first time she said the blacks. <laughs> um, and it wasn't even with hatred. It was like, not us. Uh, I, I'm here to get goodies for my people, not them. And they are a threat to me being able to provide for my people. And that was her attitude. And it wasn't the first time. Uh, like that's probably the attitude that got her into the position that she's in. And it just wasn't supposed to be explicit. It wasn't supposed to be caught on a hot mic. And so we're being teamed up on. 
And I don't know if that's consistent with civil society, especially if we want to t- keep a competitive civil society. We just have to stop pretending that it's about individuals. And this is what Harold Cruz and Crisis of the Negro Intellectual and even Hannah Arendt talks about in nonviolence, that real power and a little bit non-revolution, that real power is power that's developed within teams. It's, it's, it's power of groups, not individuals. What we talk about as individuals, power is, is kind of a farce. All real power is going to be group power. And so we need to refashion some of these groups and groups' allegiances to be consistent with black people being part of this country, right? Now, some people say, like, well, we just need to get black people assets so that they can clan up like everybody else clans up. And, I, you know, there's this way in which that's true. A lot of these problems will go away because we'll be less easy to be taken advantage of once their assets diffused among black people in the United States. But also, we just need to look at what kind of teaming up is appropriate for a democracy and, a, and a, with a competitive civil society. Right? What kind of teaming up is appropriate and is not appropriate? And that's what we need to... to to think about because this idea that all kind of teaming up is benign is um, is not going to lead to black justice, right? Because people will just because the standard teams as they are are going to keep their current configurations, which are obstacles to getting black people, you know, sharing power with black people because they're trying to hoard power for their own team, of which we are not. All right, so. I hope that was clear. I hope it's clear that teaming up isn't benign. Now, we have families pose a problem. You can't testify against your spouse. So you don't have to testify against your spouse because testifying against your spouse is kind of like testifying against yourself. There are lots of carve-outs, but there's an idea that your spouse isn't other than you. You guys are of the same kind of thing. So testifying against your own family is a little bit dubious. Right? They can't force you to testify against against your spouse because that would be a form of testifying against yourself. So there's a space for families and there's a space for this immediate connection that's, that's called with team. But if you extend that outside and you don't tightly circumscribe that space, it becomes a problem for the functioning of civil society and politics. All right. um, thank you. And if you think, black people, nobody should ever, nobody, people should think about four times before they call black men conspiracy theorists. Because we've been teamed up on and been the target of conspiracies for as long as I've been in America. And like, that's, 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 how, that's how it is. And I don't know, I think black men get to talk about being teamed up on and everyone to be able to talk about what it means to be teamed up on and not just, uh, cause you know, if Kanye doesn't watch out, he'll end up in, he'll get the Britney Spears deal, end up in receivership or end up uh, even worse, get the, uh, get the Prince, uh, deal where you end up dead or Michael Jackson where you end up dead too early. So that's what's at stake. Um, we have a benign relationship with this idea that, you know, team group members help each other out, but it's not really consistent. If you want overrepresentation, then we need to talk about the intracommunal bonds and hookups that go, because you can have one or the other, but you can't have both. All right. Take care, and I will see you next week.